I just want to make mention the spring lights making me sweat already. Hello pineapples, welcome back to my channel and today we, we, I, I am bringing you my September favorites. First off guys, I cannot believe it is September already. Like where is time going? This year has blown. So yeah, let's just get into it. Just in time for September faves came my Starbucks pineapple exclusive to Hawaii. Is that going to focus? Yes. Pineapple metal tumbler. Guys, I am obsessed. I had a few people tag me in on this on Facebook. And the second I saw it is the second I realized I had to have it. So a little story with this. It is exclusive to the Hawaii Starbucks. And my girlfriend at the time that I ordered this, I completely forgot, was traveling to Hawaii within the week. Um, so I literally needed only to ask her to just grab it for me, but completely forgot she was doing it and I had already ordered it off of eBay. So I picked this bad boy off uh, of eBay. I found it for the cheapest price I could get it for. I think it usually retails for 22. I paid like 28 or something. So not much more than the retail price. I know some people actually wanted a small fortune for these. I'm just, I love pineapples and pineapples and Starbucks define me in every way possible but I wasn't going to spend $80 on this tumbler. I wasn't going to spend $40 on this tumbler. But I have water in here, guys, but I wanted to, like, open this and show you. It is a metal insulated tumbler, and I am, like, so weird with the cups I drink out of. I have a few plastic cups, but really, really prefer my stuff to stay in metal. I don't know why I think it tastes better. I don't think it leaves a weird flavor. And, well, I'm just bougie. So... Yes, guys, I got the pineapple tumbler. I'm so pumped about it, literally. I am styling, profiling while drinking my H2O and or coffee, whatever I decide to put in here. Next, are you ready for yet another Erica Gorton book choice? Mind Hunter. Okay, so I saw this in Barnes and Nobles and I was gonna pick it up there, but they wanted an exorbitant amount of money for it, aka the cover price. And I cannot be bothered. DJ, like, he like decided he was gonna gift it to me which was really really sweet and he bought it from me off of Amazon and I was in the middle of another book and so I hadn't gotten to this book until September I'm not gonna lie to you guys it starts off really slow um, I honestly truly thought I wasn't going to get through this book at all and I was really close to putting it down but it started finally talking about the actual cases I guess let me preface this this book is uh, called Mindhunter by John Douglas and it's inside the FBI's elite serial crime unit. John Douglas has created the behavioral sciences uh, profiling department with the FBI. The show Mindhunter is largely based on this book and actually John Douglas is the basis of a character in Silence of the Lambs. I think it was Jack Crawford. So he is absolutely amazing. He wrote this book himself and when he starts talking about his interviews with serial killers in prison, like he, um, for example, interviewed Charlie Manson and he interviewed uh, Edmund Kemper, it was incredible. And his profiling skills are bar none, just unbelievable. You'd think this guy had a magic ball just based on how he can psychologically analyze a case and determine who the perp is, or at least what the profile of the perp that they might be looking for like it's a, in one case literally guys he said this guy is probably driving a dark blue or black car and the perpetrator was actually driving a ford black pinto so it's just an incredible read um it goes over a lot of cases the show is more dramatized for sure but that's hollywood but they do take a lot of the cases from this book and put it in the show so that was really cool to see and it was even more in depth reading about it so that was really interesting but i am just about finished with it but i thought i'd include it in my favorites just because i literally am probably about 80 pages away from finishing and I have to say, I'm probably going to put this in the top 10 books 
uh, the best books I've ever read. It was seriously very interesting. I really, really enjoyed it. If you guys are true crime, serial killer buffs, you guys would truly, truly love this book. It's like this serial killer bible in terms of profiling um, and behavioral sciences. So I truly loved it. And when I was in high school, I really had a thing for psychology. I love those courses. And it was really interesting to kind of pick that back up and to really read about it. So if you guys like that kind of stuff, really, really, really highly recommend. And if you like the show, you'll really love this book. So pick it up. You will not regret reading this book. Next, guys. Okay, so lately I've really been getting into my skin products. Um, I don't know if I've really told you guys. I have always had pretty decent skin. Um, I've been blessed with really good skin. Um, but when I turned 26 or thereabout, I started developing this very weird, like, rash. The doctors called it eczema. It started on my lips. It was a severe case, like, think of your worst chapped lip and times it probably by a hundred. So from that, it turned into a rash basically all over my neck and part of my lower half of my face. It went all around my mouth, onto my chin, and onto my neck, and it was horrible. So I've been able to like balance that out. It was a, you know, dual case of steroids and antibiotics and also, you know, my over-the-counter products. I've really narrowed down my selection of which products I use. Um, and I like to still experiment though, just to see. I am very concerned with how my skin looks because I'm not really interested in covering it up. So I want it to look nice. And after my eczema bout, um, what has stuck with me is severely dry skin. So this is for all you gals or guys who suffer from really dry skin like I do. I mean, I get so dry on my chin that I flake. So I'm always looking for products that are super moisturizing and hydrating. And I started watching um, this amazing YouTuber. Her name is MJ. I will link her YouTube down below. I absolutely love her, guys. She's a flight attendant. We all know that I just have a thing for flight attendant vlogs. I think they're great. I live vicariously through them. But she is just the cutest, sweetest personality. And she spends a large amount of time in Asia. And she's done a lot of, like, vlogs in Seoul, Korea. And she does a lot with, like, Korean products and I had never really like I don't really know much about Korean products but like through her I've been able to really learn a lot and her skin is skin goals like she looks stunning um she has just this dewy moisturized look I just I love it so anyway one of the products that she uses is like a snail mucin I don't know if this is the exact one she uses but this is the one I could find in the United States on Amazon at a price I could afford um, but snail mucin guys is actually like a snail excretion basically so that slime that snails excrete is what this is so it's not like the nicest sounding thing but I'm telling you I put a little bit on and my skin stays moisturized and dewy throughout the day and as I've experimented with products I find that some very much work for me and some leave me broken out like I'm allergic to something in these products and actually today I tried to incorporate a different moisturizer into my routine and it literally broke me out so I have to like get rid of that moisturizer and it's one I used to use so, but this has not broken me out. I love it. It's part of my daily routine. I will put it on once a day when my skin is clean. And it is Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. There we go. So it's like a clear liquid. It has a very different consistency. I'm not going to lie to you. It's kind of slimy. Um, it's every bit of what you think a snail mucin would sort of be like. But I will say this, guys, and this was something I was concerned about. I was like, what is it going to smell like? There is no scent, at least not one I can detect. But I truly love this product. I will link it down below from where I bought it off of Amazon. I paid like 16 bucks for this and I bet you it lasts me several months just because of how little you have to use for such a large effect to happen. So I really love this. Um, I'm really interested in different Korean products too. I really would like to try and start incorporating more of those into my routine. So if any of you are using Korean products and have a good recommendation or a favorite product, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm seriously, seriously interested. 
but yes love this and also to come let me know if you any of you would be interested in seeing like my skincare routine just because I feel like how many years I've had to perfect a routine that works for me and like I said I'm still trying different products I always try you know give and take but I think that there are just a few products that are staples in my routine and will never go away this being one of them I've used this for the last three weeks and seriously noticed the difference in my skin so and it lasts all day I find that the moisture it's, it's amazing I literally I cannot stress this enough Go buy this product next guys we all know that i'm slightly target obsessed so i'm target like obsessed obsessed we all know this like i can't control myself i just love target target and amazon i swear to you bye bye cash bye bye funds take all my money you always got it well target's 20th anniversary uh was this is, is now, it's happening, so they've been around 20 years as a company, and to commemorate their 20th anniversary, they are bringing back all of the brands that they have collabed with in the last several years. I actually didn't know, I'll be the first person to say I should have and I'm ashamed, but I didn't know that it was Target's 20th anniversary, and I didn't know that they were bringing all these brands back, and I'm actually sort of disappointed because a lot of the, like, a few of the things that I would have liked have already sold out. It's crazy. So, anyway, um, I actually remember seeing YouTubes about Philip Lim for Target, and Philip Lim, you guys, is a very awesome purse designer, and I'm obsessed with bags, as we know, um, and when I walked into Target yesterday, I saw, and guys, like, ugh, I'm obsessed look at this bag oh my god it comes up more brown on camera i feel like but guys it's actually like an elephant gray dooney and burke makes something very similar to the color and the battery is going to die who's the best favorite is it a chippy chunk say hi chippy guys literally <laughs> Battery issues are seriously a problem. I need like three batteries. Anywho, we're back. Okay, so back to my Philip Lim bag. So, okay, this color again, it like looks to me very brown, but in person I feel it's more like an elephant gray. And I think it's so sharp, especially for fall. What? Ugh. It is huge, as you can tell, because like I could, it's like three of my faces. I adore big bags. Um, I always try and carry smaller, but like I always have to have my life in my bag at all times. It's a problem. I understand, but I just love it. So I am so pumped to have a Philip Lim. My Target bag, I like I said, I remember seeing these on YouTube. I came across one as like a what's in my bag and they were so cute. And the tragic part was is that it was a video from like five or six years ago when they initially released the line for Target. So there was no way I could get my hands on one unless you go on to like eBay, at which point people were selling them for exorbitant rates because it was just one of those had to have things from that collection. So when I went to Target yesterday, and again, unbeknownst to me that it was their 20th anniversary, I saw this bag and like couldn't believe it. But I was like, you know what? No, I don't need a bag. Like I truly, I didn't need it, but I sat on it and then I went back to Target today on lunch to go get it because I just loved it so much. And like price-wise, guys, it's not horrendous. I think it retails for $45. If you have your Target red card, like after tax and everything depending on your area it came out to actually like $45 after my 5% savings so um not the most expensive bag I've ever bought but certainly not the cheapest for some I understand that not all of you like to blow money on bags but here is my reserve here is my thing guys I buy almost all of my things used from my shoes to my clothes the only new thing I like to purchase are bags. That is my thing. And you know what? That's just kind of how I live my life. So I have the pineapple one too. So I plan on switching between the two. But actually, update guys, for those of you that saw my uh, TJ Maxx video, uh, the pineapple one is actually currently at Brahmin right now getting repaired because there was a problem with the stitching. 
So for right now, I will be carrying this bad boy and when the pineapple one comes in, I will be going in between these two. But guys, like look at it. Oh my God, I love it. So this will also, I'll be doing a what's in my bag. But um, yes, I'm obsessed. I'm so obsessed. And then it's got this magnetic closure and it's very structured. So like when you set it down, it stays like in this form, which I really like. So yeah, go pick yourself up a Philip Lim bag. Um, if you guys do not like large bags like I do, it's perfectly fine. They have a tiny mini one in black that's very much like this, but it is a miniature size and it does have the um, crossbody strap. And then they have a medium sized one um, that looks a little different than this in purple. Um, I actually am thinking about picking up the black one just as like a go out bag, um, but we'll see. I feel like if I don't get it, I'll regret it, but I also don't need to spend more money, but we'll see what I do. Love it! Alright guys, last on my favorites list for September is a show. So the show is Cold Case Files. You can find it on Netflix. I will link a little like picture of what the title is or how you can find it on Netflix um, in one of the corners. But it is so good. I actually had originally seen parts of the show on Hulu, but don't feel I don't actually think Hulu had as many seasons. Um, Netflix has released multiple like episodes than who or more so than Hulu. I have to see if there's multiple seasons. I've only actually focused on season one, but it's really really good. I watched one actually while it was running in my garage the other day. We finally got our TV working out there with our Wi-Fi, so I was able to run and watch this, which I truly feel like it amped my time because while it just gets my heart rate going and I just I feel like I run faster thinking I have a murderer behind me. <laughs> really cool cases. It's really awesome to see them solved. Uh, but yeah, I really like the show. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Netflix comes out for the month of October. I feel like, you know, with you know, Halloween coming up, like there could be something, you know, some creepy movies that come on. I'm a horror film fanatic. I love horror films. I am not going to lie. I'm mostly a sissy when it comes to them though because I hide. <laughs> I like duck and cover but I really still love them. And here's a little tidbit guys. Watching horror films is actually good for your cardiovascular system because it gets your heart rate going. So why go to the gym when you can just watch a horror flick? I mean duh. So yes guys that ends my September favorites video. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching my channel. Please feel free to like and subscribe, tell your friends, and until the next video, guys, bye!